Assalamualaikum. Hello my dear students. How are you all? Welcome to another biology class. Today we are going to learn from chapter uh, introduction to animal. That means chapter two and in the third the third part of the introduction to animal, which is rohu fish, and which is also in Bengali known as rohu fish. Okay. So today um, we are going to talk about the structure, the life cycle, and the natural breeding and the reproduction of rohu. Refish. Okay, so let's start our class. Uh, so, so you know the scientific name of the rui fish is Labia rohita, and in Bengali, which is also known as rui, and in English, which is also called uh, rohu fish. And the rui fish is a um, carp type fish. You know, and there are two types of carp: major carp and minor carp. And this rui fish, it belongs to the group major carp. Okay. And the family of rui fish is Cyprinidae. Okay, so um, and um, the length is really there, hundred centimeter in length and one point five kg in weight. This is the average uh, um, uh, informations uh, for, uh, about rui fish. Um, these are some average uh, informations, and you know other uh, major carps are uh, Katla, Beagle. These are also the um, major carp. Okay, and on the other hand, uh, fishes of the same family. Uh, same family means the family of, of Cyprinidae. Okay, so from this family, um, there were another type of carp fishes, uh, which is also called minor carps, because they are smaller in size and they have less weight. That's why they are called the minor carps. So here, the major and minor carps uh, actually it indicates their size and their weight, nothing else. Okay. And the examples of minor carps are Bata, Gunia, this, this type of fishes. And so, you know, um, uh, this uh, um, graceful Indo Gangetic uh, um, riverine species is the natural inhabitant of the riverine system of the northern and central India. And also the rivers of Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Myanmar, these are the uh, region, these are the um, habitat of this uh, Rui fish. Okay. And this is species also used in um, uh, commercial car polyculture systems in our country. Okay. And because of its high growth potential, and this is also coupled with high con and also it is um, it has uh, high consumer preference. Mm, that's why this rui fish have established as the most important freshwater species cultured in India, Bangladesh. That means in the subcontinent. Okay. So now mm, let's see the taxonomical features or systematic positions uh, of the rui fish. Uh, the phylum of the rui fish is Chordata, and the subphylum is Vertebrata. Mm, class is Actinopterizae, and order is Cypriniforms. And the family is Cyprinidae and genus. The most important is the genus of the rui fish is Labio, and the species is the Labio rohita. Okay, so these are the, these are the informations about their scientific classifications. So you have to memorize all those informations. Okay, so now um, let's talk about the habit and habitat of the rui fish. Okay. And you know this this fish is abundant in ponds, lakes, rivers, and canals and harbors built in Bangladesh. And and the good thing is this species is an omnivore. That's why they are so abundant. They are omnivore. That means actually um, they uh, consume um, actually all types of foods and they have different um, food preference. Though they have different food preferences uh, at different life stages. Okay. So during the life stage of its uh, life cycle, and during the early stages of its life cycle, it eats mainly zooplanktons. Zooplanktons, you know, zooplankton means the microscopic uh, animal uh, organisms. Um, and um, but when it grows, it eats more and more phytoplanktons. Okay, phytoplankton. Phyto means plant. Planktons means microscopic plants. Okay, so phytoplankton means the microscopic plants. And uh, as a juvenile or adult is a herbivorous uh, column feeder and they're eating mainly phytoplanktons and submerged vegetation. Mm, and, and you know, it has, uh, this rui fish has modified thin hair like gill records and um, it feeds by uh, sieving the water, okay? And 
another information about redfish is the fish also well habituated in taking rice bran okay wheat bran mustard oil cake and other supplementary feed uh, under aquaculture system is really mm, you know uh, in hatcheries they actually uh, provide the fish this type of foods okay okay now now, the most important uh, topic here is the external structure of the ruby fish. Now, let's talk about the external features, external structures of the ruby fish. Um, here, the body, um, the body of a ruby fish is streamlined. Streamlined means elongated. See, here the elongated figure, spindle-shaped, and um, laterally compressed. See here, this one here, this region is compressed. This region is uh, compressed. Um, uh, um, if you compare with, uh, this uh, with, the, with, the, with this region, okay. And the color of the uh, fish is usually grayish or blackish, and sometimes they are also um, they have uh, silvery white or pale type of colors, um, especially on two sides of their belly. Uh, a full-grown individual usually it measures one meter in length and 20 to 25 kg in weight, um, but this is a very rare thing, rare scenario nowadays. Um, no, now we can uh, divide um, the whole body of a ruby fish into three parts: um, head, head, trunk, and tail. And this region is the head region. This one, this region is the trunk region, and this region is the tail region. Okay. So, um, head. Uh, um, head extends from um, tip to snout. Um, see here the um, the head here head region. Here is the tip um, from 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 the tip of the head, and here this region. This is this region is called the head, and um, the snout. Here the snout. Uh, the snout of the um, ruby fish is uh, deep pressed, um, blunt. Okay, and the mouth is sub um, subtegnial. Okay, subtegnial. Mm. And mm, usually, mm, you know, see, uh, mm, the eyes, um, east side of the head uh, of a ruby fish, uh, they um, bears a, a lateral large rounded eye here, yeah? the lateral uh, large and rounded eye. And the eyes are without eyelids, but protected by a transparent protective membrane, okay? And on either side of the head, there is a large branchial chamber here. This region is the branchial chamber, and then open outside through, uh, through a gill slit, uh, which is also covered by operculum. This is the operculum, that means the cover, um, which actually covers the um, gills of the ruby fish. And beneath each operculum, um, there are four comb like gills, okay? And in some cases, uh, most um, some ruby fishes actually they also have uh, sen thread like sensory maxillary barbels. Okay, um, barbels are actually they are uh, tiny you know, hair like structures. Okay, and um, here, uh, the, there is a membrane which is known as the brachiostegal membrane here, just uh, um, between this upper coulomb and the body portion. And this, uh, this, this portion here, this, see the cursor here, uh, mouse cursor here. This region, this region has a membrane which is called the brachiostegal membrane. Okay, this membrane actually helps to enclose this upper coulomb, that means the gill chamber. Uh, ventrolaterally with upper coulomb and thus helping uh, and thus they helps the ruby fish um, to respiration their respiration um, properly now let's talk about the trunk region of the ruby fish see uh, this one is the elongated trunk region uh, it is actually this is the middle and the main part of the body from the head to the tail and this middle portion slightly white and gradually tapering to both ends see and slightly white but need gradually tapering here and here also mm. and the whole trunk is covered with bony cycloid scales bony cycloid um, scales and you can see here there is a dark line which is also uh, this dark line is called as the um, lateral line system okay and these uh, lateral line systems actually uh, um, they're sensitive and this series of scales here 
they are very sensitive they are called the mechanoreceptors okay or um, this mechanoreceptors actually they can sense the chemical nature movements and pressure changes surrounding the in of, of their surroundings okay and now the tail region uh, tail region um, in you know for the posterior part of the body is called the train, um, tail region that means just uh, after the tra uh, from after the trunk to the caudal fin this region is called the tail region um, so uh, this is the overall external structure of our we fish i think so now um, let's talk about the fins let's talk about fins see here the dorsal fins caudal fins and all fins and the pectoral fins um in there are five types of fins found in labio rohita um, uh, and here uh, these fins are the paired fins, uh, the pelvic, uh, the pelvic fins. Okay, the, then pectoral fins, um, uh, anal fins. Uh, these fins are actually um, the. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, see here, these three, uh, these three, uh, two fins. Uh, these two fins are the paired fins of a reef fish, um, the pectoral fin and the pelvic fin, and. These three fins, dorsal fins, anal fins, and caudal fins, they're the unpaired fins of a ruby fish, okay? So um, here the dorsal fin, dorsal fin, the rhomboid shape uh, is located on the back of the middle of the trunk. And uh, it, uh, it actually, this thing is supported by 15 to 16 bony fin rays, okay? And it serves to protect the fish against rolling and it also assists in uh, sudden turns and stops, okay? And then um, see here, yeah, this one is the pectoral fin. They're the um, paired fin. Each side, um, they have a um, pectoral fin, and um, just it is located just beneath the operculum, and it is supported by sixteen to seventeen bony rays. Here, these are the uh, bony rays, um, uh, pectoral fins, and. Uh, this pectoral fin actually create the dynamic lifting force that assists in maintaining depth. Okay. And um, here, this one is the pelvic fin, okay? Uh, pelvic fin, which is also known as ventral fins, located ventrally below and behind the pectoral fin. And this fin is supported by nine bony fin rays, okay? And this pelvic fins assist the fish in going up or down um, through the water um, and also turn sharply and stop quickly. So these um, are actually supported by this pelvic fin, okay? Now the anal fin here, anal fin, it is located on the ventral surface behind the anus. And this anal fin is supported by seven bony uh, fin rays, okay? And this fin is used to stabilize the fish while swimming, okay? Mm, the last one, the caudal fin, caudal fin at the tail. Um, and it is, uh, this is a median homocircle caudal fin. Mm, it has two similar lobes here, the upper lobes and lower lobes. And it is supported by 19 bony fin rays, okay? And the tail with caudal fin actually makes the principal locomotory organ. So that means this caudal fin is the main locomotory organ. Okay, now, hmm, okay. Uh, actually, these are the all uh, written uh, informations of these uh, fins uh, I have already discussed. Mm, okay, now, then let's talk about the natural breeding of Rui fish. Mm, you know, biology of natural breeding. And the breeding habit is the most vital adaptation of the Rui fish. And you know, they are very sensitive to their natural breeding. Uh, for successful breeding, the place where eggs are released should have optimum co optimal conditions mm, uh, with respect to oxygen, um, uh, with respect to temperature, food, and, and and the most important thing is the region should be more almost free of enemies okay so ruby fish is unable to find such conditions if they are unable to find this type of conditions they do not breed okay they do not breed um, they destroy their eggs within their body okay so uh, this uh, um, optimum inborn uh, optimal conditions is very very uh, important for their natural breeding, and usually these reef fish they becomes mature uh, in their 1.5 um, to 2 years age, and they are unisexual fish. That means the male and female individual are different, but um, 
this is very difficult to identify them which one is mid male which one is female except the breeding season generally uh, sexually mature female and male reef fish uh, uh, actually the size they're different in their size the female one is smaller than um, smaller or almost similar actually see here the um, size variation 51 to 70 centimeter um, female uh, reef fishes and 60 to 65 centimeter in length of the male reef fishes in the breeding season and the breeding season is uh, rainy season that means june to july and they breed once in a year okay Mm, now egg liberation uh, the, um, if they found these optimal conditions uh, like uh, um, the temperature uh, should be 24 to 28 degrees celsius and sufficient oxygen mm, usually sufficient oxygen excited the sex gland uh, of the female ruby fish for spawning okay during this time uh, male fish follow the female okay and they uh, swim rapidly in water and when water become turbid uh, the females strongly shocking their body and release eggs and at once the males they discharge their sperms on the eggs for fertilization and this type of breeding scenario this type of breeding behavior of fish is called the spawning okay and the, another interesting term hmm, fecundity the capacity of egg production of a fish in a breeding season is referred as fecundity okay usually the fish of 1 kg weight is um, the fecundity of uh, 1 kg weight reef fish is 0.1 to 0.4 million eggs okay they can produce 0.1 to 0.4 million eggs in its breeding season and uh, this is very important the breeding ground they're very sensitive to their breeding for their breeding ground okay so without suitable environment the ruby fish do not breed they do not spawn in closed ponds beal or any other uh, water bodies okay actually they only breed in flowing water turbid water fresh water that's why they choose the rainy season okay uh, so they only breed in flow, uh, flowing water bodies like rivers, canals, freshly inundated areas. However, some rivers and inundated areas are especially recognized as their natural breeding ground of fish. And these are the region, the Halda River of our country. The Halda River in Chittagong, this is the world's largest natural breeding ground of carp fishes. You know, uh, this year, that means this 2020, um, uh, the government or uh, um, fish government authority, uh, they are able to collect more than 25,000 cases of carp fish eggs. Okay, and there's um, several uh, more breeding grounds like Jomuna River, Potta River, uh, Brahmaputra River, Arialka River, Modumut River. Okay. Uh, so, what are the advantages of spawning in flowing water? Um, why they choose um, the flowing water for their spawning? See, uh, the first reason is um, the turbid and continuously moving water, uh, fl um, flooded co uh, conditions, very effective protects uh, very effectively protects the eggs and larva. Okay, and the non-adhesive floating, semi-floating, or rolling eggs get enough oxygen for the development. Okay, if they spawn in flowing water. And the water current causes the eggs and larva to drift downstream and toward the shore. Many of them are taken to inundated areas, which are rich in food organisms required for the developing fry and fingerlings. Uh, don't worry, we will talk about the um, fry and fingerlings. And now, the fifth advantage of spawning in flowing water is the water is usually warm and rich in oxygen. Factors that favor the rapid development of eggs and larva. Okay, so here is the life cycle of ruby fish. Um, uh, we can divide the life cycle of a ruby fish into five, um, five into five phases. The first one is eggs, then hatchlings, then fry, and then fingerlings, and finally the broadfish. Here, see, these are the fertilized eggs of ruby fish. They are the large, round, reddish in color, heavy with thick adhesive coverings. Mm, and mm, the, usually 4.1 to 4.8 millimeter is the diameter diameter of the mm, fertilized egg uh, when the mm, fertilized egg of ruby fish sink to the bottom after fertilization okay and mm, then the zygote uh, division of zygote begin within 45 minutes of, after fertilization okay and 
now that then hassling, hassling this phone uh, after 14 uh, after almost 14 hours of uh, of fertilization after the 40, uh, um, 14 hours of fertilization um, this uh, newly hatched uh, juvenile um, juveniles are called the hasslings usually they are 7 mm in length and uh, juveniles are usually uh, up to three days old are called hatchling and then um, the three to four days old are called fry and they are usually 12 millimeter in length and then the fingerlings after uh, nine to 30 days uh, in of um, this range is called the fingerlings and they are almost 30 millimeter in length during the fingerlings okay and finally in the final formation which is called the broadfish mm, when they sexually mature they are called the broadfish and it took almost 1.5 to 2 years okay so this uh, is the overall life cycle of a fish so thank you all that's all for today see you in our next class